UK rapper Stormzy and professional footballer Wilfred Zahar bought a ninth tier football club. They're the owners of AFC Croydon Athletic and they're only eight promotions away from the Premier League. But how good are the South London side? We're here to find out. Today is no ordinary game. They are playing in the most prestigious competition in England, the F. A Cup. The world's oldest competition is into its 143rd season and started this year on August the 5th, where 416 teams entered the extra preliminary rounds. After destroying Sutton Athletic 3-1, Stormzy side take on Hawley Town in the FA Cup preliminary round, where the winner will receive £1,444. So for today's game, we are going to be marking AFC Croydon Athletic's performance using our state of the art technology. Our eyes. We're going to be looking at their passing, their dribbling, their showboating, their shooting. And what we'll do at the end of the game is get an overall rating and feed that back to the owner, Stormzy, who probably won't even see it. As you can see behind me, there are people on the gantry. That is because the BBC have selected this game for live coverage. You can watch it on the BBC iPlayer, BBC Sport website, or the BBC Red Button. So Liam, what is your role today? Today I'm here with the BBC. We're going to be doing a live hit for Football Focus. Obviously, Croydon have got an exciting story going on with Stormzy, Wilfred Zaha, and obviously the game's being streamed on BBC Red Button, which is amazing for, for both teams. Is this what the FA Cup is all about? I've played in these rounds of the FA Cup, so I know what it's about. It's exciting and uh, I think everyone will still have that dream that like win a few games you could draw a football league club in not too many games so yeah super exciting kind of wish I was out there to be honest did you ever score in the FA Cup yeah I got a few in these rounds I don't know if they I don't <laughs> extra, know if, extra, extra I don't preliminary know rounds extra, extra preliminary <laughs> rounds uh, yeah got some goals in there uh, we got close to qualifying for the first round last year with Bury which was good um, but yeah the best best days playing in the FA Cup these two teams have got previous and what I mean by that they played each other on Tuesday night and drew 2-2. They are in the same league, Croydon are 10th, Hawley are 11th. They've both played two, drawn two, so every chance Today's going to be a draw and it'll go to a replay and we can just do this all over again. One man who doesn't think it'll be a draw is this guy dressed as a lion. How are you feeling about today's game? I'm really confident that Hawley are going to count themselves and actually win the game. It's the magic of the FA Cup, it's the magic of the Hawley Lions. <laughs> Pre-match music is very popular in football and with an owner like Stormzy, we were keen to ask the players what their pre-match power track was. Power track? Pump it up. Pop it up. Meek Mills, Dream Tasters. How's that go? Ah, uh, off the top of the dome, I can't get. I can't get off the top of the dome. <laughs> Lord knows, Drake. Uh, dreams and nightmares, Meek Mills. How's that go? I don't know. That's an old one, mate. Uh, little baby freestyle. Clavish. Not a bit of clavish. I know it's on my mind, but I can't. I can't think of it. Right now, I'm listening to Kid Tana and Central C. Uh, yeah, it's sprinter at the moment, it's got to be sprinter. Probably a little easy, I just want the rock. I do like a bit of Glad all over. Crystal okay. Palace, I like a bit of that. Hosting an FA Cup game at this level isn't easy. We spoke to Hawley chairman Anton to find out how the build up to this game has gone. Oh, yeah, it's been a very hectic week. Great to have the cameras here. You know, hopefully, have a big crowd here as well. Really happy for the boys and the management. So, uh, yeah, really looking forward to it. As a chairman, what's the day to day running at a club at this level? It probably takes over my day job, to be perfectly honest with you. It could be from me running the, the turnstiles on the game day or, you know, sorting out the bins to something like this, you know, fielding questions during this week. It's been it's been really, really good. As the goalkeepers came out for the warm up, my first assessment was how small are these cones? Can I ask you about your cones? Yeah. Why are they so small? It's just easier to transport about rather than carrying the big ones about. <laughs> and that is just space, really. I can get a dozen of them in a bag and not have to worry about the others, you know. The rest of the squad warmed up on the back pitch, which meant we could catch up with the Croydon kit man who had a very interesting job. You're all the kit man, but also you're the mayor of Croydon. I am the mayor of Croydon. What does that mean? So on 17th of May, I became the civic mayor of Croydon. I chair the council meetings and I represent the borough around the, all around the place. And I go to fates and carnivals and different events as, as I'm invited to. That's amazing. And this is the young protege here, Connor, isn't it? My grandson, Connor, who's yeah. helped me with the kit this year. Um, and we'll probably take over me at some point, but not too soon. Oh, when do you want to take over, Connor? 
uh, preferably once I learn to drive. It was time to get serious. I want to know how good this team is. It all starts with the warm-up. Failing to prepare is preparing to fail. And so far, I liked what I was seeing. We then moved on to a heading exercise. Strong necks, decent deliveries, solid execution, very impressive. As the intensity rose, we entered the passing segment. Short distances, lots of touches with 100% accuracy. This lad even chucked in a showboat during the keep ball session. First impressions were pretty good at this stage. The team took a quick break whilst the gaffer gave out some updated instructions. I would say that is 4-3-3, possibly 4-4-2. Totally different to how they came up in the first half, which we nullified. That works perfect for us in our shape. It's man on man now. You can go and perfectly play through the angles, through the lines. When you do, then you've got quality. It's 1v1s, really. And who's better than who? We'll work that out early into the game. Yeah. Happy, yeah? yeah. Good. Yeah. Right, on. Come on, come on, come on. Towards the end of the warm up, I couldn't help but notice one player was struggling with an injury. Oh, my arm. What have you done? I think I just pulled, uh, pulled my tricep, if that's the thing. Yeah, it's a muscle. Oh, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. What did you do? Throwing a ball? I forgot to throw the ball. Just... <laughs> Are you broken? <laughs> Palace fans will recognise this lad. Brandon Pierrick, the 21-year-old winger, is a product of the Eagles Academy and made his Premier League debut against Norwich in the 2019-20 season. He is definitely one to watch today. Time for some shooting practice. Ruben Nevers lookalike got us off to a flyer. Brandon made the keeper work. This lad dodged a ball and then finished his dinner. Neves smashed one in and followed it up by rattling the bar. The best finish though was this absolute beauty. If I really wanted to know how good this team was, there was only one man to ask, the gaffer. So how good are AFC Croydon Athletic? The, the team's excellent. We've got a really good squad, really hungry squad. A lot of lads that are unfortunately not in the system at the moment and we're able to give them that, that, that platform to, to shine today. Yeah, it's, we're a new squad. Uh, Holy Town, probably a similar squad to last year. We're probably 75% new, but yeah, you're going to get the, I remember watching the Salford documentaries, the money shouts, um, which comes with the with the pressure. So pressure makes diamonds. Uh, it's a really good team. I think today will be our best performance of the season so far. The owners, Stormzy and Zaha and, and Danny. And when did you first hear about that? So I heard about it just before I came in. We've obviously done everything we can to try and get them to play today, but they're not interested. <laughs> you don't actually know until it happens. So it's been quite a whirlwind. It's happened quite quickly and, and even the changes to the exterior of the club, to the interior. So um, yeah, we need to match that on the pitch. Um, but I would say in the last couple of months, it's really come to fruition, yeah. And how good was it? Stormzy was at the previous round. Yeah, I mean, he got, he got swamped, uh, but he's great. You know, he popped in the, in the dressing room at half time. We thought that would give the lads a little boost, which it did. And all the owners have been great, to be honest with you. And it's nice to see them actually coming in and enjoying it. We won that game right at the death, so if we could have scripted it that way, that was the right way to do it. So I think he enjoyed it for that. But yeah, it's been great. And the more they come, the better. Could he determine whether you get the boot or not? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I don't want to get too big for my boots. Yeah, okay, um, get pun, yeah. Uh, no, to be fair, I think um, that there's, there's two guys, Danny Young and Jordan Davies, that need a massive pat on the back. They're running the day-to-day -day side. So I think um, the guys that have been at the club before have done a, a, a good job um, stabilising the club on, on next to nothing. So, yeah, you're always under the impression that if you don't do well, uh, the eyes will be there. But for as long as we're downloading the music and supporting them, hopefully they'll do the same for us. I'm sure every club at this level would love a famous musician as an owner. So I asked the Hawley players, if you could pick one artist to own your club, who would it be? Say, Santan Dave. I'd go old school. Someone like, it, could it be a band or something like that? Do whatever you want. Or fancy a bit of Queen, to be honest. Quite like Queen. What would you walk out to? Don't stop us now. Luther Vandross, because it can never be too much. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Gallagher. That's yeah, a great shout. What would you walk out to? Wonderful, surely. Can't yeah? Be. Yeah. Do you think they'll 100%. ever get back together? I hope so, but you never know. Gotta be Dave, 100%. Why is that? <laughs> He's my favourite rapper in the UK right now. And what would you walk out to? Sprinter, 100% Sprinter. <laughs> How's that go? <laughs> oh no, um, we're pay through thick and feet, surely it fits, so I'm halfway there. <laughs> Get the badge in is a popular trend in football at the minute where fans display a certain brand of clothing in photos. It's actually quite funny. Today, 22 players are wearing two different badges and this is what they mean. Introducing the Hawley Town badge. If you look carefully, it uses the letters HTFC all twined together in an old stylish font. As for Croydon, I got this info from the kit man. The club used to be Wandsworth and when they were, they were sponsored by Young's Brewery, whose logo was a ram. 
Anyway, here come the teams for today's FA Cup preliminary round fixture. It's Hawley Town versus AFC Croydon Athletic. Quick look at both teams' outfit of the day. Croydon are wearing the yellow and navy jersey with the navy shorts and some yellow socks. As for Hawley, they've opted for the maroon kit with little trimmings of light blue throughout. The shin pads look like they've got nails in them and the blue socks are cut off at the bottom. There's our one to watch, Brandon Purick, and here's a team talk with some expletives. Make sure your opposite number does not get a run on you. He does not beat you in a f***ing tackle. He does not beat you in the air. Make sure you're f***ing running all over him. Good all f***ing game, yeah? yeah? Three, two, one, go! How are you feeling? Yeah, lovely. <laughs> all over it. Getting that bar early, weren't we? <laughs> in a bar for three o'clock. Brandon already causing problems down the left-hand side, and the cross is defended by Hawley. The first free kick of the game goes over. Another cross whizzes past the six-yard line, but so far, I was impressed. Brandon slips in Ruben Neves, whose silky skills end up with another cross being well defended. The second free kick of the day also goes over. This time, a cross is met with a header that sails over the bar. Brandon then sent this guy for a hot dog with a cheeky bit of showboating. The third free kick of the game is lofted to the back post and then finished for the first goal of the game. 1-0 at the break and Stormzy, the Croydon joint owner, is off to enjoy a prawn sandwich in the executive box whilst we play some two-touch with the subs. That's what we're hoping for. <laughs> Wait. Oh. Oh. Good to see other celebrities like Jimmy Bullard in attendance today enjoying some non league football. The first shot of the second half ended up in the away end. Ruben Neves then showcased some outrageous skills. The lad down the right was fainting and dummying before getting his shot away, which was tipped over by the keeper. Check out this long throw. Unreal distance, but the shot ended up in the next field. It was another strong half performance from the Rams. This was the moment AFC Croydon could seal victory, but the keeper denied our guy with the tricep injury and then asked us to send him the clip later on. Maybe he thinks it will go viral or something. So the Rams progress to the FA Cup first round qualifier where they'll take on Marlow. Stormzy celebrated by shaking every player and staff's hand before shooting off in his yellow Lamborghini. Here's my overall rating for the AFC Croydon Athletic performance. Passing, decent, B+. Shooting, could have scored more, but we'll give it a C. Crossing, some great deliveries, but needs someone on the end of it, B. Showboating, A. Overall rating, let's give it a B+. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.